Hi, welcome to the first video of the series called Experiments in Signal Processing. In this series, what I wanted to do was to help understand some digital signal processing concepts and techniques through some experiments. These experiments will be done using MATLAB and Simulink. I hope you enjoy the series, particularly the first episode called Sampling. The first episode in the series is called Sampling because sampling is the first step that you take to go from the analog domain to the digital domain. So most, mostly you have an analog signal and you would like to sample it to, to be able to process them digitally. Also sampling I find uh, to be a very fascinating thing in that given the samples, you are able to reconstruct the entire analog signal, uh, all the points in between those sampling instants, uh, everything. Although I know how it works, but I still find it uh, extremely fascinating. So we start with sampling. Now suppose you are given a signal. Let us say this, uh, this blue signal here, and you sample it at these points uh, shown as red circles. We see that the between two subsequent uh, red circles, the signal changes quite a bit and uh, in a zigzag pattern in this particular case. Now, how do you, how do you think you can calculate what the analog signal was between these two points? Because you could have had any, any possible signal going through a, a huge number, infinite number of possibilities uh, of signals going through these sampling points. So how, how do you know what signal it was? For instance, this red signal also passes through those sampling points. So how do you know? The answer is that you don't know. To be able to know, that is, you don't know unless you put some constraints on the system. The constraint that you need to put on the system is called the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem. So this Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem says that if you sample the signal, an analog signal, with a sampling rate of fs, <coughs> excuse me, then the maximum frequency you are allowed to have in the signal f max has to be less than fs over 2. So fs over 2 is the maximum frequency you are allowed to have if you sample some signal at a sampling rate of fs. Also, uh, it equivalently, this also means that if you decide to sample a signal which has the, a maximum frequency component of fs in it, uh, sorry, not fs, f max in it, then the fs that you will require to sample that signal has to exceed two times the f max. If you satisfy this criteria, this constraint, then the theorem guarantees you that you are able to calculate all the points in between the sampling instance of the original analog signal. Now, this automatically implies that the signal that you are going to sample has to be band limited because it has got an upper limit, f max. That means the Fourier transform of the signal will be zero outside a finite uh, specified range. So if the signal is band limited and if your sampling process satisfies the sampling theorem, then you are able to sample it so that unambiguous reconstruction of the analog signal will be possible. Now, after you do that, even after you, you sam uh, satisfy the sampling theorem and you sample, still you will be left with this constraint though that your digital signal, that is the sampled signal, cannot have a frequency higher than fs over 2 because the original signal didn't have uh, sign, uh, frequency over fs over 2. 
uh, if it satisfied the theorem. And what if it didn't satisfy the sampling theorem, like the blue signal here? The red signal you see here actually satisfies the sampling theorem because that's how I, I, I drew this picture. Now, the blue signal here clearly doesn't because it is different from the red signal. And of course, it has got way higher frequencies than the red signal, which is quite uh, visible plainly here. So what if I actually sampled this blue signal, some signal that didn't satisfy the sampling theorem? Then what am I going to expect? What am I to expect uh, as, as a result? To understand what we can expect, we have to look at how frequency is represented for analog signals and for digital signals. So here we see that for analog signals, if we have an analog signal, then the frequencies, the frequency of the analog signal can be anywhere within this uh, real line. That is, if you plot all possible frequencies from all possible analog signals, then you will get a straight line. And this straight line goes from minus infinity to plus infinity without any any restraint. So you are allowed to have a frequency as high as you can, as you want, or as low as you want, including the zero frequency, which is the which is the DC. But if your signal is a digital signal, then you are not allowed to have all possible frequencies. Your frequency axis is actually going to be a circle, and this circle starts from zero and goes to 2 pi, of course, like all circles do. The 2 pi corresponds to the sampling frequency fs, the sampling rate fs. So after fs, it just folds over, goes all over again. Now, and the highest frequency you, you can have in the digital signal, that is fs over 2, uh, comes halfway here at an angle of pi, an angle of pi. And, and this frequency is also called the Nyquist frequency, as you know. Now, when the frequency f is more than fs over 2, so this is the situation in the picture on the right-hand side. So f is more than fs over 2, and the angle is more than pi. Then you see that this same point can be reached in a clockwise manner from the 0 going this way. So you can go from 0 to this point, and, and this distance will be, the angle will be fs minus f, fs minus f, and with a negative sign because we went clockwise. The anti-clockwise is considered positive. That's the convention we are following here. So, uh, and this number fs minus f, the magnitude of this, fs minus f is less than fs over 2 because fs over 2 is pi and this is of course less than pi in magnitude and the digital sig signal is allowed to have this frequency uh, because it is allowed to have all frequencies less than fs over 2. So your sample signal which you created from an analog signal of frequency f which was more than fs over 2 is going to be minus fs minus f or you can just say fs minus f with a phase inversion. The minus sign will come as a phase inversion. You'll get a 180 degrees phase shift in the signal. So that's what is going to happen. Now, how, how do I know that all this actually happens? And that's the precise purpose of this uh, series, to do some experiments and see uh, that all the things that we learn in the textbooks actually happen uh, when we experiment with them. So we will do some experiments with MATLAB and Simulink, and this is what we are going to do first. So I'm going to just describe what we are going to do first, and then we're going to actually do it in MATLAB and, and Simulink. First in MATLAB and then in Simulink. So initially, what we're going to do is we're going to take a signal of 1000 hertz, that is 1 kilohertz, and sample it at 8 kilohertz. Sorry, for the, excuse me that, and sample it at 8 kilohertz. So now 8 kilohertz is, of course, way more than 2 times 1 kilohertz. So we are satisfying the sampling theorem. 
So if we satisfy the sampling theorem, we expect the digital signal to have the same frequency as the analog signal. So we, we draw this uh, scenario in the, uh, on the right hand side in this uh, frequency circle. So zero is here and at the, uh, this is the origin and the full circle is FS and FS in this case is 8000 Hertz. So this point is FS and half the circle is, is the Nyquist frequency, the highest allowed digital frequency in the system, which is 4000 Hertz in this particular case. Our analog signal has a frequency of 1000 Hertz. So which comes in between here somewhere about a quarter of the circle. The MATLAB code we write to do this experiment is very, very simple. We set up two variables, F and FS. F is 1000, FS is 8000. We set up a, an array T, which are the sampling instance, the time instance uh, at which we are going to evaluate or sample uh, the signal. We chose to create a signal of one second long in duration. Uh, we, ju we just don't want a very long signal or a very short signal. Eventually, we would like to listen to the signal because listening is more fun than just watching the plot. And that's one of the reasons why we chose a signal in the audible range of frequencies. So T uh, is, goes from 0 to 1 with a step size of 1 over Fs because 1 over Fs is the sampling interval the time interval between subsequent samples because we want FS sampling rate. So once this array T is calculated, then we have calculate our signal X as sine 2 pi FT. So that gives us our sampled signal. So now this X, the sampled signal, it will have 8,001 points because of the end points 0 and 1. So we have one more than 8,000. And then we will plot the signal and we'll listen to the signal using the sound command. Now, don't forget to specify this uh, FS in the sound command because the sound card needs to know at what rate to play the signal, play the sound. When we plot the signal, we do not plot the whole one second of the signal because one second of signal contains 8,000 points. That's too many and the whole plot is going to be congested and we won't be able to see anything. So we plot only uh, this uh, six milliseconds of the signal. So one kilohertz signal, one millisecond is one cycle in the signal. So six milliseconds, we expect to see six complete cycles of the signal. So this is what we expect to see. And this is the experiment. And this experiment is just done to confirm that yes, if we obey the sampling theorem, the frequency of the digital signal is the same as the frequency of the analog signal. Now, analog signal frequency we do uh, set through this computation. We are not going to be able to play the analog signal because we are not actually uh, sampling an analog, physical analog signal in this uh, experiment. We are just computing the digital signal from the analog signal. So we are only going to be listen to, listening to the digital signal. Now, once we do this, next we violate the sampling theorem. So now what we do is that we again take this one kilohertz signal like before, but now sample it at 15,000 hertz instead of eight kilohertz, so 1.5 kilohertz. So this is less than two times one kilohertz. So we, we disobey the sampling theorem. Uh, as here shown in this uh, frequency circle. I just refer to it as the frequency circle, so, but don't think that this is a standard terminology that you will find in books. Uh, I don't think anybody calls this circle a frequency circle. There is a terminology called unit circle, which you have uh, learned about, maybe, but that's got nothing to do with this. So this uh, circle, is just, just my convenience to call it a frequency circle, so starts at zero, and when we go full circle to pi, uh, it goes to 1500 because 1500 hertz is the uh, sampling rate in this particular experiment. 
Our Nyquist frequency for this case is 750. So any, anything above 750 uh, is not representable in this uh, digital uh, domain. So our signal is 1000. So 1000 to go to plot 1000, which point represents 1000 in this circle? This plot, which is beyond 750. So we have to go all the way here, 750 and then 250 more to get to this point. So this is the 1000 point. And you can reach the same point going uh, clockwise from, from zero like this. And if you go 500, then you will reach this point. So you see that this digital signal is going to have a frequency of minus 500 because it is 500 clockwise. That means if you listen to it, you should hear a 500 hertz tone instead of a one kilohertz tone. And if you plot it, you will see that the phase is inverted because of the negative sign. So that's what we are expecting here. The code is very it's identical to the last experiment. The only change here is the frequency of sampling, Fs, that is 1500. And we do the same plot, uh, plot and the same sound command. And we, of course, uh, always mention this Fs in the sound command. And uh, we, we still plot six milliseconds, but earlier the signal was you know, one kilohertz, the digital signal, but now we are expecting the digital signal to be uh, to be 500 hertz and not uh, one kilohertz anymore. So the plot should have now, cannot have six cycles, it will have three cycles, half. Uh, 500 is half of 1000, so it, sh it should have three cycles. And we're expecting a phase inversion. So if instead of the plot uh, starting uh, from zero going upwards, it should start from zero going downward. And that's what we are expecting. And this uh, phenomena, as, we, as you know already, I'm sure, is called aliasing. That is one frequency appearing as a different, another one, uh, mostly lower. So in this particular case, a 1000 hertz signal is appearing, going to appear as 500 hertz. So that's aliasing. So we, we should be able to see that and hear that. Now we go something really outrageous, you can say, which is we will try to sample a signal which is which is more than the sampling rate in frequency. So we take now a 2000 hertz signal instead of 1000 hertz, and we signal uh, we sample that signal at 1500 hertz. So the sampling rate is lower than the frequency itself. Uh, to obey the sampling theorem, this should have been higher than twice the, the signal frequency. So this should have been at least 4,000 hertz to be able to sample. Uh, I shouldn't say at least. Uh, it has to be greater than, not greater than equal to. Uh, it has to be more than 4,000 hertz to be able to sample it properly. Now, so what will happen in this particular case? Nothing uh, different than the, the previous case that we saw. The frequency circle looks like this, uh, shown on the right. So it starts from zero and goes to 1500, which is the sampling rate. Now to plot the two to 2000 hertz point on this diagram, so we go start from here, uh, from the zero point, and then we go, then halfway here is 750. Then we go full circle here, 1500, but we want 2,000, so we keep going. We have to go 500 more, and then come here, and this will be our point representing 2,000 hertz. So you can see that this point is also the same as 500 hertz. The 500 hertz frequency is also represented by the same point. This is because it is circular and it repeats, uh, it repeats itself, right? It's a repeat, repeating pattern. So our digital signal is expected to have a frequency of 500 hertz now, but not minus 500, it's plus 500. Uh, note that difference. So it's not going to have a phase inversion. It will be 500 hertz without a phase inversion. Uh, that's what we are expecting to see.
the code is the same, f, f, s, uh, t, and then compute the signal, plot the same 6 milliseconds, uh, same sound command to play the sound, and we are expecting to see a, here a 500 hertz sound. So a 2000 hertz signal now is going to appear as 500 hertz signal. So this is also another example of aliasing. So now we have uh, described what all we are going to do. And next, what, what uh, we have to do is just to do it. So let's go ahead and do it. OK. So I have already started the MATLAB here. And you see that I'm using MATLAB version 2013A. And this is a student version, but I have a home use license for it. Uh, so you can, if you have a regular version, 2000A, 13A, or uh, I don't remember exactly when this tool strip uh, was introduced in, in the product, but uh, if you have any MATLAB version, uh, this initial ones should work. But all these buttons you may not have. Uh, if you don't have this tool strip, if you have a really older version of MATLAB, then this you won't have these things. Uh, you have to do them through the menu. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to use this version. And uh, you can modify your experiment accordingly, depending on uh, which version you have. So I have already typed in the code and into this file called sampling1.m. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you the address of my website where you are going to find all the, the code files and, and the data files that you can download and you can do the experiment yourself. Or if you want to write them from scratch, you don't want to download, that's fine too. Uh, just builds your confidence, I guess, if you just did it on your own. And uh, But anyway, those files will be there. So you can see that we have this uh, statement f and fs, and then we have the, the t and x uh, calculated, and we have the plot, and then we have the sound statement. Now this part of the code uh, is uh, has a yellow background. So this is the editor. It's got a yellow background, and the next part has got a white background. If I click it, this becomes yellow now. And sorry about that uh, notice popping up there. Uh, so these are called sections in the code. Now, a section is a part of the code which, uh, which is preceded by this uh, sign here, two person symbols followed by a space. So you know that a one single person symbol signifies a comment line, and it's not a code. If you put two percent signals and a, and the space, that becomes that's called a section, and the section uh, you can in independently execute a section instead of executing the whole file. So you can write your program in, in a file and divide it up into in sections. So always have this two percent sign and the space in the beginning of a section, and then you can run them you know one section at a time. Uh, if you want to take a pause and, and look at the results and things like that. So I find it very useful. And another useful thing of using sections is that to be able to do that, you actually don't have to save the code in a file. You can just open the MATLAB editor, type your code uh, with sections, and you can just execute them using these uh, buttons uh, that are there, which is this run, uh, run and advance, run selection, all these things. Uh, run, of course, runs the whole file, so it doesn't use the section. The mostly uh, interesting ones are the run and advance and run selection. So here, we are just going to run this section. That is the part where we sample the 1 kilohertz signal at 8 kilohertz, which is we obey the sampling theorem. And the sound is going to be played. So I'm going to hold the loudspeaker uh, close to the microphone here uh, to record the signal. I hope it gets recorded correctly. And uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to click uh, run section, run current section, and run this code now. OK, so hopefully that came through in the recording. 
the, the, the sound from the speaker. And we see the plot. Uh, so, sorry, the plot is now outside the visible here. Okay, now it's in there. So, in the plot, we do see uh, six cycles as we expected to see uh, because this is a one kilohertz signal. And uh, if the signal is positive, that means the phase uh, is zero, uh, the sine wave. So, it, from zero, it goes upwards to start with and not downwards. So, this is what we expect. Next, we are supposed to violate, uh, disobey the, the sampling theorem. So that's what we do in the next section. The next section is when we have the F as 1000, the signal frequency, and the sampling frequency, we have 1500 hertz. So you remember that if we do that, then we are expecting to get a frequency of minus 500 hertz in the digital domain, although our analog signal is 1000 hertz that we are sampling. Okay, so the same code, uh, plot and sound, and we plot six milliseconds again, like we said, uh, we are expecting to now see five cycles, no, sorry, three cycles, uh, half of six, uh, because we are expecting to uh, get a 500 hertz tone. Okay, anyway, let's just uh, run it and then see what we get. So again, we go run current selection and, okay, sorry, I forgot to hold the, the speaker close to the microphone. It, it might have recorded already, but I'm just going to run it again. Okay, so clearly you heard uh, much lower frequency than what you heard before. And so it was actually one octave down. So it was uh, 500 Hertz. And if we look at the, figure the, the plot you see that you got three cycles so it's 500 hertz and it, it has got a phase inversion so it is minus 500 so because from zero it goes down now to you uh, not not just to you to everybody to me as well it really doesn't look like a, a sine wave it looks more like a triangle isn't it now that is because uh, this is a 500 hertz signal uh, sampled at 1500 hertz, so three samples per cycle. And when we use the plot signal, the MATLAB just joins the individual points uh, through by the samples with straight lines. So, of course, it doesn't look like a sine wave in the plot. It looks like a triangle, but it doesn't matter. We know it is a 500 hertz uh, sine wave. We listen to the tone and we now saw the plot. So, next is our very bad experiment. That is, we are going to sample a 2000 hertz signal at 1500 hertz. Now, whoever wants to do that. Anyway, I don't think anybody will do that in, in real life, but we can do, this is an experiment and we can do anything we want. So we have a 2000 hertz signal and our sampling rate we set at 1500 hertz which is even less than the signal itself. And what do we expect? We are expecting a plus 500 hertz signal, if you remember. So let's run this section. Uh, let me hold the mic, uh, loudspeaker. Wow, so that actually sounded exactly the same as before. So in the previous case, we had a 1000 hertz signal sampled at uh, 1500 hertz. And now we have a 2000 hertz signal sampled at 1500 hertz. Both give us 500 hertz, but this time we are expecting a plus 500 hertz, if you remember. So now we have this uh, going up first and not going down first. So I, I, I hope you, you remember that. So here we're expecting uh, a plus 500 hertz in this particular case and in the previous case uh, we were expecting a minus 500 hertz uh, signal so that's our experiment with this uh, this part and now that's all fine uh, with uh, sine waves and pure tones but who, who is uh, sampling a pure tone in, in real life most of the time 
Mostly not. Mostly we uh, have signals which have multiple frequencies in them, are much more complex than pure sine waves. And of course, if we violate the sampling theorem in those situations, we are going to have aliasing too. But how does that sound like? Uh, how does that aliasing look like? Let's try to see that. Now, what we are going to do there is this. So we take a real audio signal. Uh, we play the audio uh, through the microphone in the, in the PC. I'm using a PC uh, for recording. And we set up the sampling rate at 16 kilohertz. So this is, uh, I represent that uh, by this switch, uh, which closes at 16 kilohertz. And after we do the sampling, uh, I'm expecting the sound source to have frequency components less than 8 kilohertz. So I'm thinking that 16 kilohertz is enough. So what I'm going to use as the sound source is just my old uh, acoustic slide guitar. Now, don't expect a great music from me. I'm not a musician. and But anyway, I can make some sound. So, and then we can play, we play this to the loudspeaker and the maximum frequency uh, allowed, allowed in that digital signal will be eight kilohertz. So you will be able to hear it. Now we are going to sample the same signal at a rate of four kilohertz. So how do you get the same signal again? So we want a four kilohertz sampling rate. You can't get the same signal twice because I can't play the same thing, the thing the same way twice. So what I have done here, you have I have tricked the system. So I have taken this 16 kilohertz uh, samples and then pass it through a down sampler with a down sampling rate of four, which means that out of every four samples, I throw away three samples and keep only one. So if I keep one, throw away three, uh, then my my sample signal, it's like it's equivalent to sampling the original signal at four kilohertz. So the same signal that I had sampled at 16 kilohertz before, now I have sampled, I have obtained samples of the same signal sampled at 4 kilohertz. So which is which is way less than 16 kilohertz, and now 4 kilohertz allows a, a, a maximum frequency of only 2 kilohertz. So it allows a, and I'm sure this guitar sound has uh, frequencies more than 2 kilohertz. So I'm expecting to get some aliasing. And in these cases, I'm not going to try to plot these signals because this is a poly, uh, polyphonic. It's got multiple frequencies in it. I, I shouldn't just say polyphonic. It's not polyphonic. Uh, it's got multiple frequencies in it. So plotting it may not give us any clue about what is happening, but we can listen to it and, and see if we can hear any distortion. So that will be uh, a proof of aliasing happening. Now. How do I know that whatever distortion uh, we hear is because of aliasing and not just because we restricted the frequencies to 2 kilohertz? Now, so to, to see that, what we do next is we take the same 16 kilohertz sample signal and pass it through a low-pass filter. So I have a low-pass filter designed to pass signals up to 2 kilohertz. So it will pass all signals up to 2 kilohertz and remove anything above 2 kilohertz. So the sampling rate will still will, will remain uh, 16 kilohertz. I'm not going to change the sampling uh, rate of the signal. I'm not going to drop any sam sample or introduce new samples to it. I'm just going to filter it. So although the sampling rate is 16 kilohertz, the frequency content of the signal is going to be limited to 2 kilohertz. The maximum frequency of this filtered signal is going to be 2 kilohertz, but I didn't change the sampling rate, so there should not be any aliasing. So here, uh, I, when I play this, we will hear what happens when just the frequency content is limited. And if this sounds the same as the previous case, if these two cases sound the same, then uh, what we heard previously was not due to aliasing, maybe. We, we don't know what happened. Okay, so now as a last uh, step, what we do is, well, let us see, uh, let us say 
uh, that we do want a sampling rate of 4 kilohertz. And we do want to sample this signal. And we don't want aliasing. What do we do? Of course, the answer is very simple because we already saw that we can filter it out, filter out the higher frequencies. So in that case, we use this filter first, the same filter. And so after we use the filter, the low pass 2 kilohertz filter, we have uh, still have 16 kilohertz sampling rate, but our frequency is limited to 2 kilohertz. And now since the frequency is limited to 2 kilohertz, we are allowed to sample it at 4 kilohertz because 4 kilohertz is two times uh, 2 kilohertz. Now, so now I can sample this signal at 4 kilohertz, meaning that I'm going to use a down sampler, down sample by 4. So now after I do the down sampling, my sampling rate is going to be 4 kilohertz. So now I have a 4 kilohertz sampled signal with a maximum frequency of 2 kilohertz. So there is no contradiction anywhere. So no uh, theorem is being violated. And I should be able to hear the, the sound with a 2 kilohertz uh, frequency upper limit imposed on it, but without any aliasing and sampled at 4 kilohertz. So I have reduced my number of samples. And I have, uh, I have uh, only allowed, of course, 2 kilohertz frequency uh, in base. So we are going to do this experiment next. So let's go back to our MATLAB window here. And I have this code already typed up uh, in this file called sampling2.m. I have already recorded the audio into a wave file called audio clip one uh, dot wave uh, at 16 kilohertz sampling rate. So what we are going to do first is just load that uh, let me uh, first clean up the, the workspace here. So I have got a cleanup button set up. I have, well, I could show you how to do that, but I don't need to because here in the home tab, there is a clear works, workspace button, uh, MATLAB, and then I just do that. So my workspace is gone. Now I go back to my editor tab to get these run buttons. So here, I'm back here. Uh, hold my uh, loudspeaker next to the microphone and uh, run this section. So this is going to read the file, uh, read the samples from the file, and just play it. And always remember to include FS in the sound command. Well, uh, hopefully uh, the sound came through into the microphone. And uh, anyway, like I said, you will have access to the original files on my website. Uh, you can download them and, and listen to them uh, yourself without this uh, microphone loudspeaker business. So next, uh, next step was the downsampling by a factor of four. So we downsample by a factor of four so that our maximum allowed, so now the sampling rate becomes 16 by 4, that is 4,000. So uh, if we sample at 4,000, then our maximum allowed frequency is now 2K, uh, 2 kilohertz. And then we just play that signal with a sound command. Uh, you see that here the, the frequency, the sampling rate has been specified as FS by 4. I, and I also write it out, write, the, write out the audio in a file so that if I want to listen to it uh, again uh, without running MATLAB, I can, I can do that. And also I can put it up on my website so you can download it and listen to it without running any, any code. So let's just run it and hold my speaker again close to the microphone and run this section.
wow. So I heard a lot of distortion there. Sometimes it seemed that uh, I'm plucking two strings, although I purposefully plucked only one string because uh, if you have multiple sounds, it's more difficult to hear the distortions. And there was a lot of uh, like a swishing uh, sound, uh, whistling kind of sound in between. I don't know if you heard that. So all that, uh, I'm thinking that must be due to aliasing and not because the, the frequency content was uh, constrained to 2 kilohertz. Of course, it was, uh, I could hear the low pass uh, nature of the sound. The, it was not as bright as the original uh, recording. So it was uh, the low, uh, the high frequency was definitely absent, but there was also aliasing, not just, uh, not just high frequency, uh, absence of high frequency. So to verify that, now we uh, design a low pass filter. Uh, so I have got a function to design that filter. I'm not going to uh, go through the details of the filter design right now, but in a, uh, in a future, in, in this series, we are going to have episodes uh, uh, where we will cover filter design, but later. But for now, you you just accept that uh, I can design a low-pass filter in MATLAB uh, with a cutoff at 2 kilohertz. So we design the filter, and then we uh, use the filter to create a filtered signal, y filt. When we do that, uh, nothing changes in the sampling rate, so it's just still FS, which is uh, 16 kilohertz. And we play the sound. FS at a sampling rate of FS and and listen to it now we let's run this and 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 record and and uh, so that you can hear uh, what happens so I, I run it Okay, so I didn't hear uh, those distortions this time. Of course, it was low passed. And uh, so I will conclude that the distortions we heard uh, earlier last time was due to aliasing. And now I have, uh, I have the filter in my workspace here, uh, HD. Uh, what I can do to satisfy you is to show you the filter response, although I'm not going to talk about how I designed the filter. So let me see if I can show you the response of the filter. Here it is. So this is the magnitude response of the filter, the, the blue line. And you can see that uh, there is a cutoff at 2 kilo. It does allow uh, some signal above 2 kilohertz, very little. So theoretically, the it was not really LES free because there was something above 2 kilohertz. I could have just put this stop point at 2 kilohertz and you wouldn't hear anything different anyway. Uh, so it's not, not a big deal. So so that's what we heard just now. Okay. So it did have very little amount of aliasing because there were some frequencies above 2 kilohertz which will, which will get mapped to uh, here. So anyway, maybe I should have done uh, stop at 2 kilohertz. I, I can't, can't change it right now. So, OK. Now, next, what we do if we actually want to sample it at 4 kilohertz and not 16 kilohertz. So then we filter first, and then I change the sampling rate. So down sample by four. Now I don't do the filtering again because I already have the filter. So uh, I'm just not feeling very comfortable. No, it's okay. The same filter. So maybe I should just uh, redesign the filter, you think? Uh, not in this video. So I'm going to use this filter. Uh, I, I don't have to filter it again. I already have the filtered signal, Y filt. So 
So I'm going to use that filter signal Y field and just do a down sampling on it. That was sample by four and get uh, Y field four. And then uh, I just play it. So now I have down sampled the filtered signal and see how that sounds. So I take the loudspeaker here and, and run it. Okay, so that sounded to me almost the same as the the two kilohertz uh, filtered signal, which was sampled at 16 kilohertz. So right now we got the identical sound quality, the same same sound, but a much lower sampling rate. So it will take much smaller space to store it. So now uh, uh, maybe you can do this at ho at home yourself. Uh, I am going to include that filter design code in, in my file. So you look at that uh, code, it's very, very obvious how to make any changes to that code. So you change the, the cutoff frequencies to make it uh, go to uh, not zero, but very low at two kilohertz and set the cutoff a little less than two kilohertz, 1800 hertz maybe. So you set the cutoff at 1800 hertz instead of two kilohertz. And then what I'm saying is this. So this filter is like this. So you can, you can set this point here at, at two kilohertz uh, and so here and and this this point corner point here maybe put it a little bit earlier at 1800 hertz and then redesign run this code again so that will be with a with a filter with a very little component above two kilohertz so you are guaranteed not to have any aliasing at all and and see if things still sound the same or any different. My guess, I have done that uh, already, but uh, that it's going to sound the same, but that's for you to do now. And I'm not going to uh, redo it at this point. So that was uh, exciting, wasn't it? That we actually played with the real audio signal and we saw how violation of the sampling theorem affects the quality of the digitized sound and uh, we heard the aliasing distortion so now we're going to do these experiments in simulink one fun thing about simulink is that sim since we are going to be using block diagrams in, in blocks simulink blocks uh, you can make some changes on the fly instead of like having to type code every time you want to make a change uh, you can make changes on the fly and that way uh, simulink is a lot of fun so next uh, we are going to do uh, this these experiments in simulink. So just uh, get ready to start simulink. I'm going to start the simulink uh, myself and then uh, do the experiments. I can start simulink in a, a couple of different ways. Uh, the graphical way will be if I move away from the editor tab and go to the home tab, then there is a button here uh, which says Simulink Library. And if I click that button, then it will start bring up the Simulink Library and start Simulink. Alternatively, I could actually type Simulink on the command line, and that will bring up Simulink as well. So I type Simulink, and this is the Simulink Library browser. Might look a bit different uh, for different versions of uh, MATLAB and Simulink although very close. Uh, I don't think the look of this has changed a lot. And you would, uh, when you are doing it, you would normally start with this, a new model. For me, I already have uh, built the model. And so the model that I, I have built uh, looks like this, sampling1.sim. So I have got a sine wave block here, this is a continuous signal block, not a, not a discrete signal block. So this uh, sine wave block uh, 
comes from let me see comes from this from this library simulink sources so in simulink there is a library here called sources and in that sources you can see that there is a block here called sine wave so this one is for continuous signals so it's a continuous sine wave so you drag that to your model then you get this you have to sample it so sampling is done by this block called zero order hold the zero order hold block is available again under under simulink the library name is discrete so these are discrete blocks and you can see here there is a there is a block called zero order hold so you grab that and grab that into this into the your model and then to see uh, and listen to the results you need the, the loudspeaker the two audio device and you also need the spectrum analyzer. Uh, I decided that it will be more fun to look at actually the spectrum than the, the waveform because then the I can see you know uh, what what was the frequency actual frequency of the of the tone that came out because in the MATLAB uh, when we experimented with MATLAB we relied on on our ears to listen to the tone and we kind of plotted it. Uh, out of MATLAB, but that's not the same as looking at the spectrum. So to get these blocks, uh, under Simulink, you have to go to this DSP system toolbox. So DSP system, to, you need to have this DSP system toolbox to be able to uh, do these experiments. So if you are a student, then you can get all these things for, uh, I think, $99 US. Uh, it's a whole package which includes everything that you need uh, and I, I say that's a, an extremely good deal because you can play with it so much and that will help uh, in your learning of course and can you can do your projects and everything you, you know uh, I don't have to tell you so in the DSP system under DSP system toolbox once you expand that uh, you will find this library called Sinks, and this is where the signals can sync. So that's why they're called sync. Uh, so, one block here is the two audio device, which you which you get uh, dragged to here, and then you also get a block called spectrum analyzer. So that's the one you get dragged here. So you get all those blocks, and then you you have the model ready. So once you have the model ready and save it uh, you can just run it so let us uh, get this model here so i will have uh, let me get back the matlab window here and my simulink model here so that's my simulink model and uh, I just keep the library browser here. So, what I was talking about uh, anyway. So, if you go Simulink and then if you go Sources, then you will find the, the sine wave. Yes, here it is, sine wave. And if you go expand DSP system toolbox, and then inside that, if you go Syncs then you can see that you got the spectrum analyzer and you got the uh, two audio device so now uh, to do our experiment uh, we will just repeat exactly we do exactly what we did with matlab so first uh, we set up the frequency of the sine wave to be one kilohertz we want a one kilohertz sine wave so double click on this uh, block and we see that uh, we have got a time-based sign and the frequency is specified here, 2 pi f. So because you need to specify the frequency in radians per second. So uh, if our frequency is 1000 hertz, then the radians per second will be 2 pi into f. You know that uh, omega equals 2 pi f. And the initial phase is 0. And 
sample time is zero, meaning it's a continuous signal doesn't have sample, doesn't, there is no sampling involved. Okay, so we say okay, and now we are going to get a one kilohertz tone out of this, and we are going to sample this tone at I think the first uh, thing was at eight kilohertz. So, so here in the zero, if we double click that, we can set up the parameters. It says sample time one by eight thousand, which is correct. That's what exactly we want. We don't need to change anything, cancel. And we have the two audio device and spectrum analyzer there. And in the two audio device, you really don't need to change anything because you can get the data type from the input and default device, Q duration one second, I have not done really any changes. And so with the spectrum, I didn't set it up uh, specifically. But not, no need for this experiment. So now I can uh, run this model. I have set up the run time to be two seconds, uh, simulation stop time to be two seconds, and then I will just again me, do the same. Hold the loudspeaker close to the microphone and run it. Okay, so hopefully you, you heard it. Uh, you see that all these controls become gray here. That's because once the spectrum analyzer opens, the controls are actually transferred to the spectrum analyzer. And so I'm going to run it again because uh, I don't like that crackling sound in the beginning because the sound card was uh, in some state. So I just run it again. Much better. Now we've got a clean sound. And we see the, the spectrum. So we have got two lines because it's a real signal. So it's got two uh, parts, plus one kilohertz and minus one kilohertz. Uh, you know FFT, right? Uh, we are going to do a series, uh, not a series, a, a session experimenting with FFT later. But uh, if, you, if you don't know that, if, if you have a real signal, by real signal, I mean that all the sample values are real numbers and not complex, then then the the spectrum, the Fourier spectrum will have two lines, uh, one in the positive frequency uh, range and one in the negative frequency range, which are going to be just mirror images of each other. So that's because of, yeah, like to the power j omega t uh, plus to the power minus j omega t will give you like twice cos omega t. So anyway because each line represents a complex sinusoid in this picture, in this spectrum. And our signal is real. So you need two complex numbers with uh, opposite imaginary parts to cancel, the, cancel out the imaginary parts and just get the real part. That's why you get two lines. So, so the frequency we have verified is one kilohertz as it should be, because we sampled it at a nice enough frequency, uh, obeying the sampling theorem. So now we're going to sample the same signal, one kilohertz. We don't change anything there, but we're going to change the sampling rate to 1500 hertz. So our sampling time, sample time, which is the time in between two samples, the duration uh, in between two samples as one divided by 1500 seconds. And we say, okay, and we run it again. So you see how easy it is to change things uh, in a Simulink model. Okay, I just uh, run it again. Maybe I didn't hold the speaker right. Ooh. Okay, so that was a lower frequency. So and mm, we don't have to guess the frequency. We can see it on the on the spectrum analyzer here. You can see this is 400, this is 600, and this is 500. So we have a line at plus 500, we have a line at minus 500, and this is a real signal. Of course, we do not see the, the phase inversion in this picture. Uh, for that, we need a time domain uh, plot, So, which we are not going to do right now because we already saw that in, in the MATLAB uh, experiment. So next, we are going to do our uh, outrageous sampling thing. So we increase our 
sine wave to 2 kilohertz so 2 pi into 2000 so let's say 2000 so that's our 2 kilohertz sine wave now and we keep the same sampling rate maybe uh, let us do a 8 kilohertz sampling rate here a bit, bit different from the from the MATLAB because it's just so easy to do these things so 2 kilohertz so no we, we do the same sequence as we did in the MATLAB experiment so keep it 1500 hertz so now we are definitely not obeying obeying the sampling theorem 2 2 kilohertz signal sampling at 1.5 kilohertz so let us, let us run this uh, run the model now okay so you got 500 hertz again you heard that uh, tone and also on the spectrum you see that this is 500 or minus 500 now you may think something must be fishy uh, can i actually hear that 2 kilohertz that it was really 2 kilohertz to do that i have to actually obey the sampling theorem so maybe i can do the sampling at 8 kilohertz which is way higher than Two times two kilohertz so this should be okay so if i get, go okay and i play now i don't know how uh, it's going to come out of the speakers because uh, i don't have very hi-fi speakers here and should be okay with two kilohertz but anyway uh, let me run this so run okay so you see that uh, it was a two kilohertz sine wave because I didn't touch the sine wave block and I you can see in the plot it is showing the frequency as 2 kilohertz so that same 2 kilohertz signal when I changed it to 1500 hertz became 500 hertz right so that is really what is what aliasing is about so if you don't yes if you don't obey the sampling theorem you will suffer from aliasing and you already learned how to calculate the aliased frequency so going moving on to the next phase uh, let me close this model we don't need that anymore save no i don't want to save it i already have it uh, next next phase of the experiment is with the audio file so for the audio file I already have the model created and uh, the model is going to be uh, like this so we have a block here uh, which is called from multimedia file and which reads the audio file just like we did in MATLAB we read it uh, from the from the disk and uh, it already knows it is a 16 kilohertz 16-bit audio and it's mono we are not doing in stereo not that anything will change if we did stereo and first uh, and we, we do all this different uh, processing and we pass them through a selector switch so this is called a multi-port switch and here in this constant block we specify which of the inputs we want to pass through so if I say one input number one will go through if i say two two will go through three three will go through four four will go through like that okay and don't worry about the star the star means that this is the default port that means if i specified something here which is and not one two three or four then four will go through um, so if i put here 500 or minus three then four will go through that that's all this star means Okay. so the first step of the experiment is that we pass the we just play the audio file straight 16 kilohertz audio and uh, so we listen to the original we consider that that the original and then we want to sample it at 4 kilohertz so we do the same we down sample by 4 now this these blocks in the orange uh, dash rectangle are there just to 
change the sampling rate back to 16 kilohertz because uh, this block wants all the inputs to have the same sampling rate otherwise it won't work so you have to now believe me that these three blocks actually do nothing to the signal and it's just like it becomes a straight line so uh, we will you will know the theory of that in the in the next episode the episode two which will be about resampling and changing the sampling rate and all that stuff a lot of fun there so there you will learn why why this is so so kind of ignore this so assume that so after the down sampling this is this becomes sample at four kilohertz and we just pass it to this input port two of this multi-port switch the next we what we did is we thought that okay let us just do the filtering and just do a low pass filter and that will also limit the the frequency so this is a filter where it will pass up to two kilohertz and then uh, block the rest and we, we listen to that and then next we said that okay uh, what if we actually wanted to sample this signal at four kilohertz and uh, then of course uh, we know that uh, it will give rise to aliasing if we just did that uh, did just the down sample and uh, sample at 4 kilohertz it will give, give rise to aliasing so so we do this trick that we first filter it so that it doesn't have any component above 2 kilohertz and then we resample it at 4 kilohertz so at the output of this block we have a signal that is sampled at 4 kilohertz and also doesn't have frequency component above 2 kilohertz and again we have these blocks within this orange rectangle the dashed uh, rectangle which is equivalent to a straight line but i need this uh, to put it there put it through this okay so now uh, let us look at the model and of course what we can do is you know all these things can be hidden so what we can do we can put this multiport switch these these blocks in the, this orange box these blocks in this orange box in one big box so they're hidden and then the model will kind of uh, look like this so then i call this a control switch and then i will control input and depending on whether the input is one two three or four uh, any of these will go through then we don't we don't see what's there so let us now so why don't i just do that uh, bring up that model so this is called sampling three and here i have hidden all those extra boxes which was actually equal to equivalent to a, a straight connection inside this if i double click this one to open this and to show this inside the what is there inside this control switch and we go go up one one block uh, so we can now play this one with control input set to one so this is just undisturbed uh, audio going to the loudspeaker and the spectrum analyzer uh, the time is set to 25 which is like about the time it takes uh, for the audio to play so if i say run So we see that the, the spectrum was between minus 8 kilohertz to plus 8 kilohertz which it will be because it was a 16 kilohertz sample signal and this is going to be always the case because of this uh, manipulation that i have done inside the box so that all the samples are the same sampling rate the sampling rates are indicated by colors here so you can see that uh, the colors are different for the lower uh, sampled signals so now let us change this control input to two so double click that and put two okay 
So now this path, the, the one which is down sampled uh, by four, which is that is sampled at four kilohertz, will go through and play through this speaker. Now let us uh, run that. Wow. So I heard a lot of uh, distortion there. Uh, wow wow sound and then multi-string sound and you can see that the, since the sampling rate was 4 kilohertz the spectrum is limited between minus 2 and plus 2 kilohertz so although the scope shows uh, all the way minus 8 to plus 8 because uh, anyway so that that's that so now we are going to do just a low pass at 2 kilohertz which is this block and that goes to the input number three so we change the our control input to three constant value of three so once we put three there the third input goes through this thing and place there and we see the spectrum there as well Okay, so there was no distortion, it was just a low pass filtered signal and you can see that the, the spectrum is again limited between minus 2 and plus 2 kilohertz as it should be because it was a 2 kilohertz low pass filter. And next we filter with that same 2 kilohertz low pass filter followed by the change in sampling rate to 4 kilohertz, so down sample by 4. I'm sorry about these colors because uh, these colors are maybe not very visible. Uh, I could change the, uh, I could change it to not show the colors. So, so we say off, then no colors. Okay, better. So. So we first uh, do the filter and then do the down sample by 4 and we have to change this input to 4 so that we play that path. We, we have this path coming out to the loudspeaker and the spectrum analyzer and we play. So now we have we have a signal sampled at 4 kilohertz and also filtered to remove everything above 2 kilohertz. Okay, so that sounded very much very similar to the case where we had used only the filter. So we gained an extra advantage, of course, by downsampling in terms of reduction in storage and gaining more efficiency, uh, re reduction in further computation down the line when you are going to do some more processing on this uh, digital signal. So that is kind of the end of the episode one of this series on sampling. Here we have uh, just had some fun with experimenting with the sampling theorem in MATLAB and Symbolink. And uh, although we have not explained why this FS over 2 limit comes, how it comes, why is it there, and uh, 
Uh, that is what happens during digitization. So the reason this is there is because when we discretize a signal, sample a signal, the actual sample spectrum, it gets uh, repeated. And we will explain all that in the next episode and try to see more into sampling, with a little bit more advanced uh, material uh, on resampling, that is uh, about interpolation and decimation, how you change the sampling rate. Although we did use some downsample blocks in this episode, but we'll do uh, some more fun things uh, next in the next uh, video, in the next episode. So at the end, uh, you can email me with questions if you have any questions related to this, uh, these experiments that I have shown here. Uh, or anything that I've said during uh, this uh, video uh, to this email address shown here. And also all the material uh, that are shown in this video are available for download at uh, http uh, www.learndsp.net. And I think uh, I'm going to name this YouTube channel Learn DSP. I've never done this before, so hopefully uh, I can do this all right, correctly, and uh, if not, anyway, you have this uh, website, and I'll put a link, a reverse link from the website back to the YouTube video, so that if you go to the website, you can click there and get to the video anytime. Okay, so see you next time.